in this video I'm going to be talking about extension tubes using using extension tubes for macro work I'm going to be doing a series of videos about three or four videos on extension tubes but this first video is going to cover uh, an issue with Nikon using extension tubes with Nikon cameras and lenses I don't think this issue has been a problem with other brands but it has been with Nikon mainly because Nikon hasn't changed their hasn't changed their lens mount since 1959 which is a good thing but the bad thing is there have been a lot of things that have been changed within the mount that make some gear not compatible with other gear now Nikon has been making these PK series extension tubes for I think over 30 years this is uh, uh, PK-12 it provides 14 millimeters of extension and here it is 2016 and Nikon still does not make a tube with the CPU electrical contacts that transfer data from the lens to the camera such as this Kenco now this is a Kenco tube so you can see the CPU contacts here so um, there's, there's going to be certain cameras and lenses where you'd really need to buy the Kenco tubes because they provide electrical contacts that the Nikons do not provide so let's say if you got a one of these PK series tubes you need to first of all the lens, what lens can you use with it you need to use an older lens with an aperture ring now all the manual focus lenses have an aperture ring and as, as far as the autofocus lenses go the older ones have an aperture ring such as the AF and AFD series the newer lenses the, such as the G and DX and the new E's from Nikon they don't have an aperture ring this is a 20 millimeter 2.8 D lens autofocus D lens as you see it's got the aperture ring you can adjust the f-stop here you, so you don't need the Kenco tube with the electrical contacts. But this lens, this is a 55 to 300 DX lens. It's a G series lens. See, there's no aperture ring. There's no way to adjust f-stop. So you can't use one of them old tubes without the contacts on it. And camera bodies. What what kind of camera bodies? Can you use these tubes with you can use any camera body now let's say if you're using an old PK series Nikon if you're using a more like an entry-level body like a D3200 3300 5200 5300 5500 there's not going to be any kind of metering that what I mean by that is you will have to put the camera in M manual mode manual exposure mode and you have to set the shutter and f-stop you know with either by going off a handheld light meter or guessing there will be no metering you can't use any auto exposure mode however if you're using a higher end Nikon such as like a D7100, 7200, D4, D5, D, D300, D500 you can get metering with these old tubes but you, you can only use the camera in M manual mode or A auto aperture priority and in aperture priority you know you'll get you set the aperture and the camera decides the shutter speed and in manual mode you can use the camera's exposure meter to guide you to correct exposure so if you want to use if you've got a lower end Nikon that doesn't provide metering with a non CPU lens or if you've got a modern G lens without the aperture ring don't get the Nikon tubes get these, these Kinko now I think I think there's other brands that make tubes for Nikon that have the contacts on them I think Velo was one manufacturer so get the Kinko or the Velo now you're probably asking about this this old tube here what is this? Well, this is the the shortest tube that was ever made for a Nikon mount. It's it's a Nikon Nikkor K1. I don't know if you can see that. It's the old K1. 
Now, even though it was made, it was manufactured during the non-AI era, you can safely mount it on any Nikon camera. It does not have the the little skirt or lip that sticks out that would crush the metering tab, like a non-AI lens has. <clears throat> It, it's the shortest tube Nikon ever made, and why would you want a tube that short? Well, the shorter the focal length lens, the stronger the effect of ex the extension has on it. If you want to use it on a wide angle, like a like a 24 or 28 millimeter lens, this PK12 is probably going to be too long. You're going to run into a situation where you either the subject is is too close to the lens to be practical. You know, not enough working distance, or you might run in, run into a situation <clears throat> where there's so much extension where the, it just won't focus at all. The, the subject would have to be actually have to be inside inside the lens. So if you can use a real short tube on the short focal length lenses, such as this K1, and get the right amount of extension. You know, you need for the re reproduction ratio that you're shooting for. And, but the kicker is on this K1, there's no aperture linkage such as this. So when you're using the K1, you're not going to get auto aperture. I mean, what I mean by that is the camera is not going to hold the aperture wide open so you can focus and compose and then stop it down while the picture is taken. What you're going to have to do when using the K1, you're going to have to open the aperture using the lens's aperture ring, focus, compose and then stop the lens down to the aperture you want to shoot at, take a meter reading, and then shoot. Now that's a slow way to work. Certainly not very useful on shooting moving subjects like insects when you need to work quick, but it's the only way that the K1 can be used. So I hope I've cleared up any questions or misconceptions misconceptions that you have about using extension tubes with, with Nikon bodies and lenses.